Today's episode of Behind the Numbers is brought to you by Hayfley Flanagan. Hayfley Flanagan is a full-service accounting firm that's been serving our clients since 1967. We are not your typical accounting firm. Our services extend well beyond tax and audit to include valuation services, strategic and succession planning, leadership development, and more. When you work with Hayfley Flanagan, we help you realize your long-term goals. Learn more at hfco.com or call 856-722-5300. Hi everyone and welcome to Behind the Numbers. My name is Dave Bookbinder and we are coming to you live today from the beautiful RVN Television Studios. I've got two guests with me in studio today and we're going to be talking about how to add rocket fuel to your business. And I am pleased to welcome to my right Andy Grubb who is the Chief uh, Operating Officer and also Integrator at Hayfley Flanagan and Hank O'Donnell who is a wisecracker but also (laughs) expert EOS implementer and he is the founder of Positive Traction. If only you saw what went on before we got on air. Welcome to Behind the Numbers, you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So I'll deny it all, Dave. I'll just deny it all. Understood. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll maintain some composure from okay. here on out. But I, I want to talk about what, we, what I just said here, adding rocket fuel to your business. And we're going to be talking about something called EOS. You're an EOS implementer. So EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System. And from the research I've done, it looks like more than 250,000 companies are using EOS. So um, they've got to be getting some results and they're doing something right. Why don't you introduce yourself to the audience, tell them a little bit about who you are and what an EOS implementer does. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Uh, I am president of Positive Traction and I'm an expert at EOS implementer. EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's been around for about 25 years and it really is designed to help entrepreneurs and the leadership team get what they want from their businesses. Some people want to exit their business, some people want to get better control, increase profitability. And I work with typically entrepreneurs and the leadership team over two years, helping them get clear on the vision, where they're going short and long term, implementing a traction accountability system so we get to know exactly who's doing what, and as a result of that, improving team health. So the, it's a journey, it's a change management system, but we basically use proven business tools and they're around for years. But in a system. So, as the chief operating officer slash integrator at Hayfley Flanagan, <laughs> you've implemented EOS. Yes. So, what, what prompted you to do that? Well, I uh, was introduced to EOS back in 2015, so I've I've been practicing it for almost 10 years now, and uh, it is just a game changer. Um, I was provided the book uh, called Traction, written by a gentleman by the name of Gino Wickman, Mm -hmm. who created EOS, and I just fell in love. Um, It's it's simple, uh, it's it's a no-brainer. And uh, by, a, by being able to implement it uh, with, with a company that I had worked for, we saw the results. And it, it works. It's just as simple as that. So um, I, I'm proud to say that, you know, I continue to, to implement it and use it uh, with Hayfley Flanagan, you know, the, the company that I'm with. And we, you know, we couldn't be happier. That's great. We're going to talk about the results you got later on. Yeah. But before we do that, we've got so much to unpack here on EOS. And there's a lot of terminology that's unique to EOS. So, Hank, I want to ask you, one of the key terms in EOS is something called a rock. Right. What is a rock? So a rock goes back to Stephen Covey, who used the analogy of if you have a glass and you're trying to put uh, sand and pebbles and rocks and water into it, they're all there. What typically we do is we grab whatever's handy. So we take the sand and we put the pebbles in and we hey, there's no room for the rocks. His great learning was really prioritize. Put the rocks in first, the pebbles go around the rocks, the sand goes in, and voila, the water goes in. So rocks are 90-day deliverables. In EOS, every team will identify what's the key priorities, three to five at the top for the company, and then every seat throughout the company from top to bottom will have their individual rocks. It's an excellent accountability tool. We we aim to have 80% complete. So critical that everyone in the company knows what's important. They're called rocks. Yeah. And, and Andy, for you, um, some other terms that I'm familiar with with EOS are how you define some of the the role players, if you will, inside an organization. Yeah. So things like visionary, mm-hmm. uh, you've got the title of integrator, mm-hmm. there's implementers, 
talk a little. In the book Traction by Gina Wickman, um, he surmises that uh, businesses need to have a specific type of leader. Uh, some of these uh, leaders are called uh, president, owner. Uh, these are the people that have the big ideas. Uh, you know, we know Steve Jobs, um, you know, Elon. They've got great ideas, but they're not necessarily the people that can implement. Yeah. So therefore, um, you have someone called an integrator, which is the role that I play. What I do is I support the visionary by being able to take all of those ideas, sift out really the good ones, and, and start the process of actually making it real and implementing. So uh, that's, that's what my role is. Um, and then the implementing the team, um, set the rocks, to set the stage for, uh, for moving forward. And, and for me, um, as, as an integrator, uh, he, he's my confidant. He's the person that I can lean on. Uh, because I'm supporting the visionaries and I'm supporting all of our team members as well. So um, he supports me. Right. If mm -hmm. I could add something. Yeah, by all means. Andy is extremely modest. The integrator is a fundamental driver, so a chief operating officer. So she is one of the most talented integrators that I've ever worked with because dealing with visionaries, it's go, 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 go. And then there's the integrator seats about responsibility for execution on the business plan and yeah. P&L. And yeah. there's a lot of no, no, no over here. Yeah. And that's because you have that dynamic uh, energy there between we need to execute on the business plan and it's a behind the scenes role but when I look at companies really there's always a great strong number two there it doesn't get the attention it's often a uh, unappreciated seat but you know Andy does an amazing job because visionaries can be very very difficult to work with they have lots of ideas they can change perspectives um, with, I, if I would say, we call them in the U.S. sometimes flaming visionaries. I mean, they're just like all fire with yeah. ideas. And yeah, just keep yeah, coming yeah. Up. And who's keeping this, the, uh, the company moving forward? So that's the integrated role. And for me, when you have those combinations, we call it rocket fuel. You know, it's go, 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 and discipline execution. You can get onto a nice, profitable growth trajectory. Lots of visionaries, though, without that, they, and I'm yeah. a recovering visionary up and down. Yeah. And the, the team yeah. just chasing around yeah. trying to what's, what happens. So yeah. I, I've worked with a lot of those visionary types throughout my career, the entrepreneurs and yeah. you know, the big idea people. When you do your implementation or when you implemented it at your firm, Andy, did you get any resistance initially from these visionaries to kind of let go of the rope? Because my experience is they tend to want to hold on to everything. Mm -hmm. Would you like to speak from your experience? For, first, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for your compliments. Um, absolutely. Uh, you're not a visionary if, if you're not holding on. Right. So um, it is a, a practice in patience and in letting go. And as uh, Hank had mentioned, having a strong integrator that has the patience to be able to work with the visionary to earn that trust mm -hmm. and little by little, step by step, um, uh, you know, allow him or her to go on their pace to let things go. Once again, they start to see the results. It's it's much easier when that happens. Yeah. So I, I like to say that the the, the 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 visionary integrator relationship is more like yin and yang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. we you have to have both. It it really doesn't work w without one or the other. And for lots of visionaries, you hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. there, Dave. It's quitting who you were to become who you are. Mm. And for visionaries to recognize, you may have been very successful growing the company, now it's time to grow the team. That's and right. you have to stop doing that to grow the team. For me, lots of my clients struggle with that because yeah. there's a grief there, I built a business, what's it gonna be without me? And I have to trust the team to do that. And that's giving up something. And, but that's, otherwise they hit the ceiling and yeah. the company can't grow because the visionary is not able to build a leadership team. Right. right. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. something about accountability, and I know that's one of the key components of EOS, and right. there's something called an accountability chart. Right. Um, regardless of the chart, can you speak to accountability, what it means from your lens, and what you've uh, implemented at Hayfley? Sure. Sure. So for accountability, um, EOS is a superb accountability system because one of the things about accountability is clear expectations. So sure. those rocks, expectations, the accountability chart is what is expected of me in my seat. So when I look into your eyeballs, who are you, what are you accountable for? And then there's frequency of meetings and communication. We have a weekly level 10 meeting, uh, which is a where that you can, you can report on your progress, on your rocks, and any issues that you have. So we bake accountability into the system, not from a perspective of beating people up, but from a perspective of let's work together to achieve these goals and let's celebrate when we get them. So we, we don't weaponize accountability. It's more like let's hold people accountable. And what I find is the best employees need that. 
their desire, yeah. they're craving that, they yeah. want to be held accountable, but they want to know for what. Yeah, and I guess with accountability comes recognition, right? Absolutely. Right, and that's, yeah. that's the, the upside of the accountability. Absolutely. You, you yeah. achieved something, congratulations. Yep. Yeah. Andy, what, what's accountability and look like inside Hayfley Flanagan? You know, so inside Hayfley, every single person knows exactly what is expected of him or her in, in their role. We have rocks, as, as we had mentioned, and everyone needs to attain their rocks. Um, people have what, what, what is called in, in the EOS world, world LMAs, which is the person who is their leader, their manager, and the person who, who holds them accountable, who helps to hold them accountable. Everyone has a relationship with their LMA. Um, so no, one, no one's in the dark. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I would say is that people that are, are at Hayfleet Flanagan or uh, are employees that, that practice EOS, they're, they're yearning for direction mm -hmm. and they want to get feedback. And, and we have found great success with our employees because, because they know the vision of the company, they know what is expected of them, and they set their own personal rocks that they can achieve for the betterment of their profession. So in, in their career, it's great. Yeah, so let, let's unpack that just a little bit further. I want to talk about the, the communication you called it the feedback loop. Mm -hmm. So just go a little bit deeper into that and, and what's the, the feeling like for the employees? I, I imagine, as you alluded to there, yeah. there's enthusiasm around something like that. I know that in organizations I've ever belonged to where people were transparent and, and communication was a two-way street, you get more productivity as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's called level 10 meetings, which are meetings that we hold um, with, with uh, specific groups and, and divisions within, within the firm. Everyone has an opportunity to bring up issues or any kind of ideas or opportunities and, and help us solve them or help us achieve uh, ideas or, or um, you know, grow. So if, if, if any employee feels that the leadership team is, is not on par with, with our vision, mission, and values, they have a right to say something, mm -hmm. and they will. And again, there's empowerment and, and richness in that, which I think really supports, uh, you know, the health yep. of, an, of an organization. And I also think um, Hayfley Flan Flanagan is an excellent example. As the leadership team goes, so goes the company. That's right. And Andy's just just her openness to ideas, and you know, when, when at, with her under her leadership, issues aren't bad things. No. They're just areas for improvements. So you know, in EOS, we really are we're celebrating bringing up issues and solving issues for the greater good, and they have done an excellent job with that. Because what that does is in, it helps with engagement, retention, mm -hmm. employees' voices feel they heard. Actually, they listen to me. We solved that problem. Isn't that amazing? So that there's an engagement there. And this leadership team in particular has been very strident of make, about growing the next generation of leaders. So they are saying, what do we need to do people engage and then make it safe? It's psychologically safe to bring up issues for yeah. the greater good, for the client satisfaction. And it's not a witch hunt. Too many companies have that, you bring up the issues and you get shot right. for it. Right. We are saying, no, bring them yeah. up, celebrate, let's get better yeah. together. People are scared at times. They are. You know, yeah. and, and we, we do not have that type of environment. Um, it is a very safe environment yeah. to, to, to bring up any kind of issue. Yeah, and psychological safety in the workplace is uh, so important to absolutely. get employee buy-in and engagement mm -hmm. and everything that comes yeah, from that. Right. Because yeah. we depend on people so much more these days, and retaining talent and keeping talent, yeah. it's, a, it's a critical component of a strategic success for most of my clients. Yeah, for any business, right? Yeah. People are your most valuable asset. Absolutely. I preach that from the top of the mountain every day, so I totally get that. These guys live it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what? They do. Yeah. I, I, I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. So. I want to ask you both how people can connect with you if they want to learn more about you. Hank, um, yes. I want to tell the audience how they can connect with you if they so want the to learn more about So the easiest way for to connect with me, Dave, would be uh, through email, hank.odonnell at eosworldwide.com, hank.odonnell at eosworldwide.com. And Andy, how, how can folks connect with you if they want to learn more about you or yeah. maybe get some more insights on how they can go about implementing EOS in their organization? Uh, absolutely. And, I, and first, I just want to say I'd be happy to speak to anybody about, about EOS. But you can reach me um, on the Hayfley Flanagan website, which is www.hfco.com, or you can email me directly at andrea.grubb, G-R-U-B-B, -B, at hfco.com. That's awesome. I think we have to take a commercial break here, so you guys sit tight. Okay. We're going to pay a few bills, and we'll be right back on Behind the Numbers after this quick break.
Un ataque cerebral puede ser fácil de detectar. Su ser querido no logra hablar o quizás no puede moverse. Pero existe otro síntoma de ataque cerebral que muchos de nosotros no vemos. Se llama negligencia espacial y puede ocurrir durante o después de un ataque cerebral, causando movimientos visuales distorsionados. Afortunadamente, existe una solución que utiliza tecnología óptica basada en prismas durante la rehabilitación. Si usted o su ser querido experimenta un ataque cerebral, pregúntele a su doctor sobre la negligencia espacial. Encuentre más información en KesslerFoundation.org. Weeds. I have you surrounded. You just gonna thunder? Or are you gonna take your loan back? We're gonna take it back. We're gonna take it back. With Scott's Turf Builder, triple action. It gets three jobs done at once. Kills weeds, prevents cab gas, and keeps your lawn growing strong. Glorious! Ah! No, no. Get a bag of Scott's Triple Action today. It's guaranteed. Feed it long. Doug. Where only abilities matter. Un ataque cerebral puede ser fácil de detectar. Su ser querido no logra hablar o quizás no puede moverse. Pero existe otro síntoma de ataque cerebral que muchos de nosotros no And welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and we are talking about the entrepreneurial operating system and how it adds rocket fuel to your business. And with me uh, still is Andy Grubb, who is the uh, Chief Operating Officer at Hayfley Flanagan. She's also the EOS integrator there. And we've got Hank O'Donnell here with me, who is the expert EOS implementer and also the founder of Positive Traction. Um, we wrapped up that first segment. Uh, Andy, you had mentioned something called a Level 10 meeting, mm -hmm. and I just want to help you define that for the audience. Sure. Why is it called level 10 and what happens in a level 10 so meeting? So in a level 10 meeting, it's it's a, a time for uh, the group of people, the group of employees, to be able to um, go over their rocks. So uh, again, everyone has rocks, uh, you know, for, for each each quarter. Uh, then, then it's a time to go over uh, to-dos, action items, uh, is, uh, things that people had to do in the past week or, or two in order to be able to either complete their rocks or help um, fix an issue. And then really the majority of the time um, we are talking about issues or ideas or, or opportunities. So again, it's that uh, placeholder, that, that time um, uh, every other week for us that we get together as a group to go over what's working, what's not working, and really to discuss the issue and really the, the most important thing is to come up with a solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, and and at the end we we rank those meetings and yeah. we try to get to a level 10. We try to get to uh, you know a 10 meaning did it start on time? Did it end on time? Did everyone get a chance to, to speak? And did we solve some issues? Yeah. So. All right guys I think we've covered enough of the the technical terminology mm -hmm. aspect of EOS and, and the audience is probably dying to hear about results. So I'm going to start with you Andy. Mm -hmm. What have you seen at inside of Hayfleet metrics any mm -hmm. way you define yeah. results as a result of implementing EOS? Yeah so um, there's been many. We have been able to build the infrastructure uh, of the firm so that people are doing things that they need to be doing in their seats. Uh, we have uh, created a, uh, several new roles within the organization and because of that we are running much more efficient and, um, and effective you know, uh, as, as a firm and in turn that is you know the bottom line it's, it's helping our clients mm -hmm. because we're getting things to them uh, you know in, in a much better fashion um, we are able to think about the future and build plans for where we want to go as an organization and the sky is the limit for us. That's awesome. Hank, you've done implementation for many, many organizations. Talk a little about some of the highlight reel, if you will. Yeah, um, so I've been doing this for 12 years with about 135 companies. and. It depends what the entrepreneur wants for their business. So when I ask the or exit, some of them just want to get their life back and stop working 80 hours a week. They want to have a nice a, a team that they can use. So we get crystal clear getting the team aligned to what do we want to create on the long term. And then because it's an execution system, they will get there. But it does mean they may have to make some hard decisions. So you know, the, my clients, sometimes Dave, I sit there and, and I had one client and they want it to be $500 million. 
within 10 years. And you know, my little bubble head was like, holy moly, we're only at 20 million right now. Are you guys smoking something? Mm. Guess what, they got there. Because the world shows up, they start making decisions with that, we're going to get to 500 million. That's the revenue, we want a profitability. But then they make all the decisions screen through that lens and they made some tough decisions. You know, right people, mm -hmm. right seats, locations, risks. Mm -hmm. But they had a framework to do that. So I tell you, I, I just tell folks that, I, especially with entrepreneurs, what do you want from your business? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the hardest thing. They don't know. They've been in there working really hard. They're frustrated, They're, they don't have the right team. Sometimes they just want to say, listen, I just want to get my life back. And I say, yeah. we yeah. can get there. We can get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah and clarity is one of the big things that Absolutely. entrepreneurs yeah. tend, yeah. tend yeah. to lack. Yeah. You, you keep yeah. talking about right people, right seat, yeah. and so forth. So I'm just curious when you've implemented it and mm -hmm. when you've seen it in your other clients, is there an opting out, if you will, of, of people inside the organization who don't necessarily buy into their particular seat? Uh, yes. Yes. Would you like to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. We we yeah. we knew going in and and starting the implementa implementation of EOS with uh, with Hayfley, uh three years ago. We knew that that we would probably lose, um, you know, maybe five percent of of our current uh, uh, workforce because you, of what you just said. Some people are scared to be held accountable. Some people are scared of change. For some people, it just doesn't work for them. Uh, this this system allows people to shine if they mm -hmm. want to. And uh, so, yes, we absolutely um, did have people, uh, what I would call self-vacate, yeah. um, yeah. and that's okay. Sure. Because it's 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 who they are and what they you know what they need at the time, and there's uh, there's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We're looking for people who want this challenge who want to get on this train with us and go on this journey of EOS and who are, you know, who get it, who want it and who are capable of doing it, yeah. so. And then this leadership team, and particularly with Andy, has had the tough conversations. And what I find when I start with clients, I usually tell the team, the team that's with me now is probably not the team that I'm going to end with. And some of right. you may be different people. Mm. So they need to skill, get their skill set, they need to grow. And what you're doing is being really clear for what a right person is. Says, I can tell the shift, because that wrong person sticks out and it undermines the culture. And we yeah. say, you know, it's really important yeah. just to support our culture, except for Hank over here. You know, like, you know, Hank says, we need to, to have those conversations. This team has had yeah. the conversations yeah. in a caring and supportive way to help people transition out and then bring in the right people. And then those people will tell their friends and neighbors, this is mm -hmm. a great company to work for. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be here. Yeah. So that, that's where. I find is if I tell my clients, right people, right seat, right people, right seat, mm -hmm. just over and over again, yeah. that that pays unbelievable dividends over the years. Yeah, yeah. so many great things come from that. The book Good yeah. to Great talks about Absolutely. that at length as well. Yeah. Andy, I know you've mentioned a couple of times to me in passing about the why behind the why. I want to yeah. give you a chance to, to speak to what that means. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. We have something called the VTO that, that, that we use, and it's, again, it's, okay. and on it, it, it shows our values, it, it shows our mission, um, and, and, and our, you know, 10-year plan. And through EOS, we were really able to, to really think about why are we here, who do we want to serve, and what is our goal? Not just, again, throw out a big number or, or to just go through the motions. We really wanted to get to the point of, why do we wake up in the morning? What do we want this organization to be? How do we want to serve our clients? How do we want to grow and think? And, and the great thing about EOS is that we do this several times a year. We assess what, what our vision is, we assess, assess what our mission is and our values just to make sure that we are on the right path, and you know what? Things change. Mm -hmm. uh, technology changes, the world changes, and yeah. just uh, allows us to be flexible, but always keeping in mind the why behind the why. Part of an organization with a bigger mission. They're, yeah. they're not there to just trade hours for dollars or, or make yeah. widgets. They want to be part of something yeah. and aligned with something that aligns with their values. Andy, for anybody out there in the audience who would like to learn how to implement EOS mm -hmm. or get in contact with you, mm -hmm. what's the best way for them to do that? So go on Hayfley Flanagan's website, www.hfco.com, or email me directly at andrea.grubb, G-R-U-B-B, at hfco.com. 
Hank, same to you. How can folks reach out to you if they want to learn more about you or get EOS implemented? So I welcome the email at hank.odonnell at eosworldwide.com. Hank.odonnell at eosworldwide.com. Guys, time goes very quickly here in Behind the Numbers. Uh, we are down to the short strokes. Just about a couple minutes to go here, so you're on the clock. But I want to give each of you a respective last word, if you don't mind. And Hank, I'm going to start with you. Um, your choice, key things that the audience should know about EOS, whether it's regard to implementing uh, results, what they should be thinking about. So I think my, my passionate plea is to use an operating system. I struggle, I grew up, my family was an, my dad was an entrepreneur and I saw the struggle that entrepreneurs go through to build businesses. And I want to make a fair playing field for entrepreneurs to be able to grow their businesses and pass it on to the next generation. And life does not have to be so hard for the entrepreneurs out there, that there are resources in there to take advantage of that. And the number one job of an entrepreneur, in my mind, is to grow a successful leadership team and to step up to the next version of themselves. And I think that traction in the U.S. helps them get there. And a lot of, that, a lot of the energy that we have in this economy is, is from entrepreneurs, and we want to make them successful. Great. Mm -hmm. Andy, same for you. Uh, last word, anything yeah. you'd like to share with the audience? I was just thinking about it, and, and literally I have two words. EOS works. It okay. simply does. It, the proof is in the pudding. It, thousands of companies are running on it. It works. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the dividends are going to be great. Yeah, and I've been inside organizations that run EOS, and I can also attest to what they're saying here. It does create an environment, not only of accountability, but of communication. And as Andy said, it, it, it really helps to convey the mission. People get bought in, and there is a culture shift that happens. I've seen it. I know it. Everything you guys said is absolutely spot on and then some. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Unfortunately, we're out of time thank here. Thank you. And thank you out there for watching us and, and listening to us today on Behind the Numbers. We have been talking about adding rocket fuel to your business through the EOS system, and we've had here Andy Grubb, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Heafley Flanagan, and also Hank O'Donnell, who's an expert implementer at EOS and founder of Positive Traction. My name is Dave Bookbinder, and I'm the one that my clients turn to when they want to know what their most important assets are worth. So if you're a business owner and you don't know the value of your business, we should have a conversation and you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to have a chat. That's all we have for today. Thanks for the big cheese running the board today. Great show as always, and thank you out there for watching and listening. We can't do it without you. We'll see you next time on Behind the Numbers, everyone. Take care. Today's episode of Behind the Numbers is brought to you by Hayfley Flanagan. Hafley Flanagan is a full-service accounting firm that's been serving our clients since 1967. We are not your typical accounting firm. Our services extend well beyond tax and audit to include valuation services, strategic and succession planning, leadership development, and more. When you work with Hafley Flanagan, we help you realize your long-term goals. Learn more at hfco.com or call 856-722-5300.